the water stance or ice stance is really effective at boxing at long range. So if you're in a 1v1, the cooldown on the blue one is very short, so you can get it off very often. We're going to throw our ability, hopefully we can get this Vulcan. We ult on him, so we're able to get the pick there. We throw our two down, but Sylvanas pulls him out. I think this Bacchus might be able to get away. We throw our one, we're able to get the pick. What a do, Skibbity Boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Merlin Mid. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, I absolutely love the state of the game, the current battle pass, and all of the skins that come with it. This Aang Merlon skin is absolutely fantastic. I love the voice pack. I love all the little lines he says when casting abilities. I love all the emotes and effects. So let's go ahead and review Merlin's abilities. Merlin has three stances. He has his purple stance, he has his fire stance, and he has his ice stance. But for Aang, the last airbender, it's going to be his wind stance is purple, his fire stance is red, and his water stance is blue, and then his earth bending gets tied into his passive, which we'll get to in a minute. Let's start with his three. His three is called flicker. It's going to allow him to do like a mini blink and teleport away out of situations. If he's rooted, he can still do this. It's going to be hard CCs where he's no longer able to dash away. So Merlin's one in the wind, bend, wind bending stance is going to be he throws out a giant wind circle and if it passes through something it's going to target them whenever it fully deploys if it's within the radius of the larger circle and the enemy has been hit by the smaller ball then they're going to take okay. damage from your wind ability. Then the second ability in his wind stance is going to be a circle cast and it's going to pull enemies hit towards the center of the circle. Very similar to how Aang leveled up his bending, we are going to want to stay in the wind stance for quite a bit of this early game and just sit back and farm. We haven't mastered all of our elements so we want to take our time and make sure that we can master everything before really engaging in battle. So Merlin's fire stance, which will be the last stance we kind of switch into, is going to be really good for closing down enemies at close distance. His one, he's going to shoot fire in front of him, that's going to deal damage over a couple of seconds, and if it hits an enemy, it's going to apply a tick damage where they burn. The fire stance two is going to summon two dragons, and it's going to shoot flames, and there's going to be a cross section in the middle. Enemies hit in the middle are going to have their protections removed with each tick of damage. It's not a lot of protection removal at level 1, but at level 5 it can build up and remove a decent amount. And then Merlin's water stance, or the avatar's water stance. His one, he's going to shoot a water brawl forward. If it hits an enemy, there's going to be a little explosion. This ability is going to deal 15% more damage to enemies that are slowed. And then his water stance too, he's going to make it rain from the sky, dealing tick damage below. And then Merlin's passive, each time he uses an ability, his next basic attack is going to become empowered. And that is where the earth bending comes in. So when you use an ability, you can take a look at the passive meter. There will be a little blue diamond. That means that your next basic attack is going to have some rocks on it, and it's going to deal bonus damage. Merlin's ultimate is very unique. This is how he switches between his three stances. So the general order is purple, red, blue, purple. So if you just push Y and you're on purple, you go to red. If you're on red, you go to blue. If you're on blue, you go to purple. However, if you push your ultimate ability and then you want to switch from purple to blue, I play on console savage, so my left trigger are LB and RB are how I cast my abilities. 
If I was in purple stance and I were to use my ability and push RB, it would take me to my blue stance. If I were to use my ultimate and push LB, it's going to take me to my fiery stance. And if I use my ultimate and push left trigger, it's going to take me to my void stance or my wind stance. Merlin's ultimate is also going to knock back enemies and slow them, so if an enemy gets too close, you can ult them and knock them back to cancel them out of an ability. Ultimate is ready. Now that we are familiar with Merlin and Aang's abilities, let's go ahead and go over the build. So the first thing we're going to be going is Mage's Blessing. This item, once it's evolved, is going to give us 10% cooldown and a little bit of MP5 plus some bonus damage. Then we're going to be building the tier 1 item of Spear of the Magus. Spear of the Magus just got a recent rework, so it has new stats and a new passive. We're going to show face to help the Savannas. Because we showed up, we were able to make sure that he got out. If we did not, they probably would have closed in on him. After we get the tier 1 of Spear of the Magus, we're going to be going into tier 2 boots as soon as we can. If we could save up for the full boots, that would be fantastic, but we only had a little over the 900 gold required for the tier 2 boots, so we're just going to back get the little power spike that the tier 2 boots have, and then farm up. We're going to place a ward left, meet up with the rat, gain a little XP and gold. So we're going to cast our air bending ability, and then we're just going to fall back. Let that ability do its damage, and we're gonna sit and kind of just play it super safe until we can get our boots online. So very similar to Avatar in the show, I think airbending is the safest stance. Early in the game, it allows you to just clear wave at a very safe distance. Then, whenever we get a little bit more damage and a little bit more comfortable, maybe even a little bit of a lead, then we will switch over to our water stance. So the purple stance is really good at clearing wave from a distance and grouping people together in a team fight. The water stance or ice stance is really effective at boxing at long range. So if you're in a 1v1, the cooldown on the blue one is very short, so you can get it off very often. We're going to throw our ability, hopefully we can get this Vulcan. We ult on him, so we're able to get the pick there. We throw our two down, but Savannah pulls him out. I think this Bacchus might be able to get away. We throw our one, we're able to get the pick. So we're going to rotate away, go back mid and clean up some of the farm there. Then lastly, the fire stance is kind of a finishing stance, so if you can get a little bit of poke off in the wind or water stance, and then switch over to the fire stance to do close range damage. So my issue with the fire stance is that the fire 2 is pretty easy to avoid, and it's especially easy to not stand in the center of it. And then the fire one takes a long time to cast, so while you're casting it, you're pretty open to attacks. I like the purple stance because I can just throw a giant wind ball out there and run back to tower and just farm until I get a little bit of a lead and can do some relative damage. And then the ice stance is just good for popping. So now that we have our boots online, we're going to start playing in the ice stance a little bit. I do realize that there are a couple of different ways to play Merlin, and that starting in this wind stance may be a little bit passive for some people, but I generally have a lot of success whenever I play like this. Play very passively, build up a bit of a farm and a bit of a lead, and then try to convert that. So we're going to go ahead and use our ultimate onto the Alcorn. He dodged in a great direction. We're going to blink in, try to use our one, but Rat is able to clean him up. Our red's right here, so we're going to go ahead and clean it up. We do not have any abilities off cooldown, so we can't do a whole lot. Without Rat, we probably wouldn't have been able to get this camp until our cooldowns. With this build, currently we have 20% cooldown. I like cooldown on Merlin. I think the more often you can use your abilities, the better. 
However, I don't necessarily want to go Chronos Pendant. We're going to cast our Wind Ability. We'll let it clean up the wave. Buys us a little bit of time, so now we're going to rotate and look for a camp. We do have enough money for a Spear of the Magus. The recent changes to Spear of the Magus make it to where whenever you damage an enemy with an ability, they're going to take 7.5% more damage from all damage sources. Merlin has a lot of tick damage. So whenever he lands this and can apply it, it's going to do a lot of damage. So Sylvanas is a little deep. I might not have followed him as much as I could have. Playing it a little safe. We're going to clear wave and then see if we can do anything to help him. Bacchus comes in. We're going to blink out to avoid his ultimate. Someone seems to be struggling. Al Kwong is able to come and clean up our Sylvanas. We're just going to keep hanging out. It's a 3v2. Sylvanas jumps in. Or if Al Kwong jumps in. We're going to get our one off. We get our ult off. We're able to get a pick onto the Vulcan. Ratatasker is really deep. We're going to rotate and see if we can help him at all. Where did you learn to fight like that? Rack gets the pick. It's going to take a while to dry off. Rack gets the double. So we're going to take their speed since we're right here. Taking it for the Ratatasker. And then we're just going to go ahead and fall back. I say attack Gold Fury, then I realize that we are no, we don't really have the positioning for that. So we're going to go ahead and back, get our Spear of the Magus online. So if we were to have gone the Lifesteal Boots, we would be dealing more damage than if we were to go the Cooldown Boots. However, I really want to get some Cooldown online. So after Spear of the Magnus, I'm going to begin working on Soul Gem. Follow me. It looks like the current meta, or the builds that do the most damage, are kind of the just penetration builds. So a lot of builds you will see these days are going to have like a Mage's Blessing, some kind of boots, Spear of the Magus, Spear of Desolation, Soul Reaver, Obsidian Shard, and then maybe a Flex item at the end. But we are going to kind of stay away from that. With Merlin, I feel like Soul Gem is a fantastic item. It's going to allow him to really accelerate his mid and late game. Once we have it online, we should be able to stay in lane and then strictly just worry about our mana. We do have two wards. Let's see if we place them. Keep an eye out for the Fire Nation. Vulcan's hanging out mid, not too much of a threat by himself, but if somebody rotates in, he could be a threat. Let's see, Solanus misses his pull. We're gonna throw our abilities. When casting your combo in the purple stance, I feel like when you're going on wave, you wanna throw your one first and then your two. But if you're trying to target an enemy god, it might be best to use your 2 first and then your 1 into it. If the enemy god sees your 1 coming, they might back away and then be able to dodge your 2. But if you use your 2 right away, then use your 1, it's going to be a lot harder for a player to dodge. We were able to get a pick there. We are 5-0-2, having a fantastic start to this game. Sylvanas is on gold. So Fire Stance is a great stance for burning objectives. It's going to remove some protections and apply that burn from the one. We are able to secure the gold fury. So now we're going to head back mid, try to clean up the wave. It's going to take a while to dry off. He just dropped my red, and somebody picked it up. Down. We're going to clean up these mid-harpies. So these two mid-harpies are kind of the most important camp you can contest in mid, other than the red buffs. The dual harpies are much more valuable than the single or elder harpy. So if you have to make a rotation and you're choosing between the solo harpy or the dual harpies, 
you want to try to contest the dual harpies. You're just gonna get more gold and XP for it. So we're gonna blink away from our fountain. We have our soul gem online and soul gem is gonna provide us some lifesteal. It's gonna provide us 10% cooldown. And then every time we land an ability, we're going to get a stack onto soul gem. After we have four stacks on Soul Gem, the next ability cast is going to deal 30% bonus magical power and it's going to heal our allies around us. So right now we have 30% cooldown on our build. We've got 110 power coming from the Spear of the Magus, 10 flat pen, and a really useful passive. We're going to throw our water too onto the turret and to the wave. So now we're kind of staying away from the air bending. We're going to start water bending a little bit more. That's rough, buddy. We're able to get the pick over here. Bakasaur looks like he's going to be able to rotate out. Bacchus is here. We see he jumps onto the camp, so we're going to throw an ability onto him. Rat's able to get a pick. Vulcan uses his ultimate. We're waiting for a cooldown. We're gonna get a pick up, oh, we miss everything on Vulcan. So now we're waiting on cooldown again. We're gonna switch to our fire stance. Probably not the best stance to switch to. I think we would've been better off just staying in the water stance. We're gonna use our two to clear the wave and then we're gonna blink just to make sure that we are completely safe. We're gonna clear the wave and then we're gonna make our way to our red buff. So, Savannah beat me to it and was able to let the Neath know that people were missing mid and potentially rotating right. We're gonna go ahead and clear this minion since the enemy wave is not in lane yet. We're just gonna clear the wave, go and check these dual harpies. Vulcan's in mid, we have three people here. Your right tower is under attack. Rat goes in deep. If we would have followed up, there's a chance we probably could have burned that Vulcan down. Our Quan comes out of nowhere. So right there, that was a situation where I think if I casted my two and then my one, I would have gotten more damage off. For the relics, we went with Aegis because we figured we were going against Vulcan. Vulcan's ultimate is going to be very deadly. Right as I say it, I get tagged by it. I'm going to have to blink away, avoid this Alquan. Throw my two down just in case he was pursuing. He turns, it ends up, he was back and up. We're going to go ahead and back and then we're going to go into the Spear of Desolation. Spear of Desolation is going to be the remaining 10% cooldown that we need to get to 40% cooldown. On my way. And we managed to get to 40% cooldown without rough, going buddy. into Chrono Suspended. An ally has been slain. Still like that item. They really good passive. Just does easy. not do a whole lot of damage. Someone seems so to be now that we have some heals online, we have no need for health potions. We're really just going to be buying mana potions and wards, trying to place the wards whenever we can. Our team's not here, so there's no point in really pressuring up. That's just going to put us in a bad spot. So we're going to rotate back, clean up our red, get that little bit of farm, gold, and XP. Your left tower is under attack. Attack Waiting for the, the wave. Fury. Should be able to clean up this wave. And then we have a small oh, camp to go for. Gold Fury is up, but we have nobody around us to really help out. So we're gonna go and get the oracles. Now our team is here, so we should be able to burn this Oni Fury down pretty quickly. The Oni Fury is gonna make it to where whenever our next mini wave spawns, it's going to be a little bit enhanced. It's gonna have some stronger and tankier minions. Rat is getting pressured, but I think he's gonna be able to get out, so we're just gonna stick with the Sylvanas in mid. Akasaur is rotated up pretty far. 
Akasaur is a very elusive character, so even if we do make a rotation over there, there's no guarantee that we're going to be able to get him. Whereas these people over in right, they seem to be very deep. It's a 3v2, so we're going to go ahead and rotate over, see if we can help our team out. Savannah is rotating behind us, which means that Vulcan's probably not far behind. We're going to go for this pick onto the Medusa. Oh, I remember this play. We're going to go ahead and ult. And the minions eat the ability, and then somehow she doesn't get hit by that. We should not have turned around right there. I think that was the devastating mistake. And then we had our Eads and Aegis that we could have used, but failed to use. So I think that was a good rotation. I think we probably played that a little incorrectly. I was expecting that Medusa to go down from my water too, and she did not. So I had to hang around and get a basic off. Did not expect the Alquan to deal damage, and then I immediately got followed up by Vulcan. I could have Beads, could have Aegis to avoid the Vulcan. I was just a little too slow on my reflexes. Looks like our team is about to get the Bakasaur. He rotates out, our team's gonna have to retreat. Vulcan has Divine Ruin online, so anyone who gets hit by one of his abilities is going to have 40% less healing. Follow me. So we're going to blink out of Fountain, go ahead and move our way towards mid. Raditasker is working on our red buff. Be careful, middle. Hey, over here. So. I am blinking or using my flicker quite often and I do want to point out that there is a difference between using your flicker and using your flicker in front of an enemy. So if you're in jungle and you're using it just to get around a little bit quicker, that is probably okay in a lot of situations, but if you're using it to get around in front of the enemy, they're going to know that you don't have your escape or your dash so they're going to be able to push you. I would recommend only using your 3 to get around faster whenever the enemy cannot see you. He's able to clean it up. Vulcan ult. We beat and then Aegis instead of Aegising. We're going to rotate around. We're trying to play it super safe. We're going to cast a water 2. We're going to get a water 1 off. We're going to use our ultimate. Alone is able to get the pick. An enemy has been slain. Attack middle lane. So right here, we should be able to push the middle tower. I think that they'll be able to back and protect the phoenix. We're able to get the tower. Somebody makes the call to go for fire giant, and I agree. I think that is the right call. Alona rotates back so that way Medusa can't get a free Phoenix. Enemy missing, right? So Vulcan is here. I'm pretty sure he used his ultimate recently. He might have it, he might not. But as soon as Sylvanas leaves the fountain, I become the target. I take way too much damage from that knockup. And then the Vulcan ult comes in and kills me. But our team was able to get the fire giant. So that was kind of just an unfortunate turn of events. I took way too much damage from fire giant. I should have avoided his knockup. I didn't realize that I was the one that was being targeted. And that was probably on me for not realizing the animation shift towards me. So after we go into the Spear of Desolation, we're going to be going into Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is going to make it to where we do anywhere from 3 to 6% of the enemy's maximum health whenever we damage them with an ability based on the amount of power that we have. So regardless of the protections, the amount of health that they have, you're going to be removing a percentage of their health each time you damage them with an ability. This item is great and is used by almost every mage. We're going to blank out, we're going to switch over to our wind stance. I should have special emoted each time I left the fountain so I'd just be flying around on my ball the whole time. So if you notice this purple glow around Aang right now, 
That means that your next ability from Soul Gem is going to deal that bonus damage. Two people on Bologna. We're going to rotate in, see if there's anything that we can do. Does not look like there's anyone coming. Kind of just hanging out, wasting time in jungle at that point. So we're going to rotate to the gold here. Should be able to burn that down relatively easily. Uncontested. So now we, that we've entered the late game, we're looking to get the remaining towers and then hopefully push a phoenix. We're going to clear the mini wave and then focus the power with our team. Need healing. We're going to place a ward up so they can't rotate in behind us. And now we're going to attack the Phoenix. Here comes the enemy team. We're going to throw some abilities down. We're going to throw the one. We thought we got the two off, but we got stunned out of it, so we actually never got the two off. That was a successful defense. We're going to have to fall back. I blink behind my team. That way I'm not in the front line. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate out. Clean up their camps. We're not going to be able to really push four into five right there. Looked like Neath was going for the red, but I took it, so I'm going to let her have our red. Clean up the oracles on the way back. It was just We weren't going to be able to really do anything with all of them sitting down under Phoenix, so our best bet was to just fall back and strip away the jungle. We're going to pick up two wards, two mana pots. Our damage is up, we're going to let Neath have it, but we might rotate over and get some of the gold and XP. Take this jungle buff. Take this jungle buff. We're going to clean up the Harpy. Take care of the Vulcan's turret, so now we're going to stay close to the Sylvanas and Neath. Hopefully our grouping will continue. Looks like Neath is going left. left we have Bologna here. There's two people in left. Medusa is on their side and Baka is near our tower. So while our rat and Neath are cleaning it up, we are going to start doing some damage to the Phoenix. So the issue with the three of us attacking this Phoenix is none of us do great structure damage. We're going to have to use both our relics and then blink out. We use our three to get out. Cast some abilities just to make sure that we can escape. And then we're going to go ahead and back. Even the backing animation where Aang pulls out his glider just looks fantastic. I'm enthralled with this skin. It's absolutely amazing. So we're going to cast an ability, hopefully prevent the enemy from coming around the corner. Savannah is able to get a take. We're going to throw out the air ball. Waiting on cooldown. It looks like their team is going to retreat. We are going to rotate into the jungle. Alquang rotates onto the Savannah. We miss our air ball. We're going to get the pull. We should have blinked in aggressively. We're going to get some damage off. We miss our two because he got pulled back. We're able to get the basic off onto Al Kuang. Now we're going to want to back it up. On my way. We're going to clear Vulcan's turret and the wave, and then we're going to rotate in jungle, see if we can help out this Bologna. We're going to pick up the red buff. Now we just need to wait for our team. Sylvanas is a pretty important part of our team. He's going to allow us to sustain outside of the fights with his heals. Plus give us the bonus protections from his heals and the item. Lotus Crown. Pyromancer is available. So is Fire Giant. I think we could just burn down the large Fire Giant. So we're going to make a play for that. We're 
going to just throw all of our damage on it. It does not look like this is going to be contested. Next is the Pyromancer. So after getting the Fire and Pyromancer, I think it's best that everyone back and leave that one around the same time so that way we can group together. Neath and Bologna were very healthy and had a lot of mana, so they're just going to keep fighting. So at this point in the game, the Gold Fury is about to be up. I remember I'm going to make a play, or like make a call out to go for Gold Fury. And everyone else is like, nope, let's just attack middle lane. And they're fair, that's absolutely correct. Um, we do not need gold at this point in the game. I was thinking that we should attack Gold Fury, so that way we could get the bonus minion waves, or the enhanced minion waves. And then they were basically like, no, we have Fire Giant, we just need to pressure mid, and that's absolutely correct. I think it would be helpful to have the enhanced minions, but it's not necessary. So they made the call that we don't need them, and I'm gonna support the team and rotate in with them. That is a Vulcan ult. We're able to cast R2, get some damage off. We're going to keep hugging this corner, trying to get some abilities off. Savannah goes in, throws down an ultimate. We're able to zone them away from the front half of the Phoenix. We're going to throw our 2 down onto the Vulcan turret, and now we're going to focus the Phoenix. We got the Phoenix down, now we can look for the team fight. We're going to throw our 2 clean up their minions. Back it up a little bit to avoid the Vulcan turret. We're going to switch over to our wind stance. We throw our air ball out. We get a pick with it. Lona also gets a pick. Now it is just the Vulcan left. We're going to start tickling down the enemy Titan. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you ever want to see a god play, please leave a comment or join the Discord server. These stats for this game will be posted in just a few minutes. As always, thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.